Good morning. I see we have some folks joining us this morning. I'll give folks a minute to get in and get settled in. I guess it's evening for most of you. It's a morning here for me. I've been up since 5 a.m. ready to talk to y'all. I'm very excited about that. So I'm gonna talk a little bit this morning. I, I don't wanna to waste too much time because I know you all have busy schedules. Um, let me introduce myself. My name's Patty Kroom and I am the Director of International Admissions, Recruitment and Student Success at Michigan State University. So I lead a team that oversees all of our um, undergraduate admissions and recruitment. I've been to probably many of your countries, wherever you're from. Feel free if you wanna throw in the chat at some point where you're from, um, whatever. Um, but I wanna talk a little bit this, this evening, this evening I'll say, um, about the US higher education experience. One of the things I think I find when I meet with students is students aren't necessarily aware of what's so unique and so different about US higher education. And certainly with what's, you know, some of the press we've had in the last few years, students have a lot of concerns and worries on is it right, is it right for me? And so what I wanna share in the next um, 25 minutes or so is a little bit of background to make sure you really understand what's unique about the experience and why that's still valuable in today's world. So give me a second. Um, I'm gonna get my screen share going here. And um, let me see, I've got a couple more people in the waiting room I need to let into. There we go. Um, and uh oh, great. Well, good. Um, hopefully y'all can see my screen now. Um, let me get started on the presenter mode. There we go. Super. So um, again, for those of you that are joining late, I'm Dr. Patty Kroom, I'm Director of International Admissions at Michigan State University. It's my team that would be um, you know, visiting your schools, uh, coming in and reading your applications. And I want to make sure you really understand what the U.S. higher education experience is about. So, whoops, hit a little too fast there. So uh, what, I'll, what I want to touch on is why is it so special? What is it about U.S. higher education that is truly unique? And then also a little bit about the process of applying, because I think that's one of the things that really makes it unique is, is the process. And then um, I'll talk a little bit about rankings, because that always comes up as we're looking at this, um, and other considerations. But all these things together, as I'll get to in my conclusion, speak to why US higher education is still a great option. Um, among all the places in the world, I'm a really strong believer that US higher education prepares you for the future, and I'll talk to that. A little bit of background on me. Um, I've done my, my um, you'll see I have my PhD. My research is in global higher education. So this is one of my very favorite subjects to talk about. Let's see, oops, I gotta get down on here, oops. So what are the things that make US higher education unique? So in a comparative sense, the US system is absolutely like the largest about the, oh, I'm sorry, having a little trouble on this computer this morning. One of the largest systems in the world. It's, we have about 4,500 colleges and, uh, and universities. So it's really enormous. Compare that to Canada that has maybe fewer than 200 um, I don't know about your own countries and your own systems, but the number of institutions, and these are accredited, like recognized institutions, not just, you know, fly by night places where you can get a great education. So there's enormous size. And what that does is it gives you huge choice. Um, so that's one of the things we'll talk about is the choice and the variety you've got. Some um, students look at US higher education and wonder, hmm, should I go to a public school? Should I apply to a private school? In many countries, there's a huge difference in quality in private versus public institutions. In some countries, private institutions are viewed as maybe you know, lower quality. Um, don't use that at all. In the United States, it's really no judgment on that. Um, in the US, you've got places like UC Berkeley that are public universities in the California system. And you've got private institutions like Yale or Harvard. Uh, you've got just a great variety of those. And so the, whether it's public or private does not speak to its quality. It does speak to some of the funding behind it. Um, another thing that students think about is some students believe that 
if you're in a, um, public, a pro public institution, it's going to cost less than a private. That's also not always true. Um, you can get some pretty high cost public institutions. You can get, and, um, and some public institutions give scholarships, some don't. So you just, um, you can't really judge it just by if it's private or public. We'll talk more about some of the other factors that you might look at, but this is really distinct. A large number, public versus private is a very different concept. The other thing that is unique is the variety of institutions. And this is again, you know, when we're looking at why it's a great choice, it's because you can find a place that really is absolutely right for you. So we've got institutions in the US that are uh, large research institutions like Michigan State University. We're one of the um, 63 um, AAU, American Association of University Institutions, really recognized for the kind of cutting edge research we're doing on our campuses. And you've got small institutions, small liberal arts colleges, where you might um, have very, very small class size. Maybe you've only got 900 or 1500 students in the whole university. Um, so you have a very different experience. You've got um, different kinds of um, STEM institutions that are looking like Illinois Institute of Technology, just you know, looking more at engineering. Arts institutions like RISD, um, uh, Rhode Island School of Design, where if you are, really want to be an artist, it might be the right place for you. So there um, are faith-based institutions, uh, just a whole variety depending on what you're looking for and what you want to study. Those are things to really look at closely. Um, what are your choices in major? What are your opportunities going to be? What's the size? We'll talk more about some of these things. The academic flexibility is um, perhaps in my mind, the greatest and single most important thing to know about US higher education. So if there's one thing I want you to walk away with today is understanding how flexible and, um, and really broad US higher education is. The reason I think this is important is, unfortunately, my generation is leaving students with um, not the best situation. We have a lot of problems in the world we need to solve. And solving those problems is not going to come from knowing one specific discipline alone. If you are a, uh, maybe an environmental scientist, you're still going to need to work with people that are in politics or marketing, or maybe even folks that understand sociology and how we affect change in, in um, communities. So you need to be able to interact with people from different backgrounds. Some of that is what US higher education does because we have almost any institution you go to in the US, if you're studying chemistry, we're still gonna make sure you know how to write because you're gonna have to write papers to convince people on things. You're going to be uh, perhaps taking some other humanities courses to understand the impact of science on the world. So you've got this broad, um, broad view of the world that you get. Moreover, I know when I was 17 or 18 years old, I wasn't sure what I wanted to study. Um, you know, my parents had some influence. I thought I wanted to be a doctor. Let me put it that way. I went into my first biology class that first year. I wanted to do medical research, frankly. And I got into a lab and I realized I don't like being in the lab. This is not going to be a career for me. So um, I wound up changing my major and um, I realized what I liked was the analysis and I went on to study math um, as my major. I didn't have to change universities. I didn't have to start over. I had the ability to change my mind. Michigan State has 200 majors. We've got majors you've never even heard of before. Things like packaging and maybe urban, urban planning, things you might not have thought about. And when you come to the institution, you have the opportunity to change your major. You also have the ability to do double majors or just maybe a specialization in an area. You can create the kind of a career and academic experience that you want in many of our institutions because you're not just studying one thing. Most countries, if you come in to study accounting, you're studying accounting. That's what you're studying. And if you want to take French on the side or learn more about environmental science because you want to specialize in environmental, you know, accounting for environmental organizations, whatever it may be, you don't have that chance. That is the biggest thing about U.S. higher education. You are not having to be just you know, committed to that one major at the time you're 17 years old. Now that said, if you really know what you wanna do, that's fine. My oldest son was that way. From the time he was a, a little one, I knew he was going to be um, a computer programmer and that's what he's doing today. But I would say the majority of students, that's not the case. 
uh, support systems. Our institutions provide an amazing amount of support, social, um, so psychosocial support, academic support. If we admit you to Michigan State University, we want you to succeed and we put the kind of resources there to help you. There are some countries that have more open, they might be less expensive, they might have more open admission, but it's kind of a sink or swim model. You're on your own. Um, and that's just not the way it is on US campuses. There's all kinds of resources to help you succeed. So uh, I, th I think that is really distinct about US higher education. Campus life, um, well, this is a little different to talk about this in the midst, in the midst of a pandemic because our campus life isn't what isn't what it used to be, right? It's a little bit um, you know, subdued. We've got students that are studying online, but US campus life will come back. We're on a pause right now. Um, and the way I view this is, is that, hang on just a second. The way I view this is that um, it's kind of like a seed that's under the ground. You know, we have four seasons here in Michigan and right now there's snow on the ground, but underground are those seeds and they're gonna start gradually opening up and blossoming into beautiful flowers. Life on campus is absolutely awesome. And so you get, you know, the, the, the experience of the spirit of the campus, the residential experience um, that happens some other places, but I would say the intensity and the kind of um, spirit and, and love of, of institution that you'll find at a place like Michigan State University is also unique. That will be back, especially for those of you that are just looking now toward higher education in a few years, things are improving and we're going to come back to that. The application process I'll talk about briefly, uh, but that is also unique. Um, you know, is it if you could please stay muted, that would help me. Thank you. Um, so uh, the application process is different than a lot of countries. I'll talk about that in a moment. But it also means that you're not dependent on just one number. Your admission to Michigan State University isn't entirely dependent or other universities on one score on your IB or a certain score on your A-levels, for instance. We have a much more holistic process. Finally, um, US institutions do have a reputation of being more expensive and, and that, that is well earned. It is, um, can be very expensive, I can't deny that, but you have to look um, a little further, I'll talk more, speak more to that, that, um, that you've got to, you have the opportunity to get scholarships and sometimes full ride scholarships. There are institutions that will meet full need, they're often very hard to get into, but often, um, even places like Michigan State have merit scholarships that may make that more affordable than you would suspect. So, you know, really looking, looking deeply, but that is again, another unique thing. Okay. So um, one of the things again about, uh, that I mentioned was the uh, application process. I'm not going to go into this heavily. I think there's some other presentations on that. What I will say is again, uh, we look at not just one figure. Uh, we're not just gonna wait and admit you based on your final IB score. The final scores may be important, but actually with the timeline we've got, you know, you, you may be admitted long before you take that final exam. There's not one entrance exam that is your whole life. We're looking at you broadly and as a person. So that means depending on the institution, there'll be an assortment of, of measures we're going to use. One thing I tell students is what you do in high school is the most important, the biggest determinant of how you're going to perform in university. So work hard and study hard right now because no matter what, that's going to matter. Um, as you've seen perhaps with the pandemic, some schools are not requiring tests. Although I would say a large, you know, most institutions, if you're uh, coming from schools in Asia, as I think most of you are, they are going to, if you're not a US citizen, perhaps, or um, in an English speaking school, or even then each school has its own rules will require at least an English exam. TOEFL, IELTS, nowadays um, Duolingo, we accept Duolingo, a lot of different options out there. Um, but we're going to look at other pieces. And again, the other <clears throat> unique thing is with 4,500 
institutions, we don't all do it the same way. It's not a national system. So you have to do the research to find out. But this again, gives you that opportunity to maybe show off who you are as a person. Even if you didn't get the, the great grades you got on that one exam, you'll still have opportunities with all the choices that are out there. All of these things are not required. I'm just giving you this as an example of what makes some of this more distinct in the US and why it may be the right answer for you. Now, the application process, again, is different. And this is one of the things you really need to pay attention to. Um, it's a great opportunity, but you need to not wait to the last minute, right? Because in some, some countries, you get your exam results in June and you apply in July and you start college in August. And that's not the way it works in the United States. Typically, students will be applying much earlier. Um, I'm not gonna go over all of these terms, but early decision, if you're applying to, or let's say you're applying for November, for fall of 22, of 2022, if you apply and ask for um, a decision in, in, a, in, in early action to early decision, you have to apply by November, November of your final year of school, ahead of the August when you're going to apply. So clearly you don't have all your final results. If you're still in school, you don't have all of that information. We're gonna expect you continue to do that, but you have to be planning. That means you have to be planning well ahead. Um, this, the year before you're ready to graduate, which hopefully some of you are already thinking about. That said, a place like Michigan State, we have those deadlines, but we will still, our application is still open. We're past our regular decision, but as long as we have room, we will still be reviewing students for admission. So there's a lot of flexibility, but distinctly you need to start early to take advantage of, of US higher education. Now I wanna to speak to rankings. Um, because many students will look at US higher education and say, oh, all these really highly ranked schools are there and that's why it's great. Yeah, we have some really fabulous universities. But remember, we have 4,500 colleges and universities. And you can go down, you know, take the top five, 10% and beyond um, and combining that all these places are not the same. You know, it's like it's comparing apples and oranges and bananas sometimes that you can't look at rankings as the whole reason. We'll talk more about fit in a moment, but you can't look at that as what distinguishes US higher ed. Some students don't realize that US News and World Report is really a magazine and a for-profit company. I've put these examples of, really, they're all magazines, if you look at this, that do one kind of ranking or another to make it clear that this is not a government assessment. Of, of, as it is in some countries, of the ranking of institutions. Each of them picks their own ranking. Many of the factors they use are not going to really be critical for your undergraduate experience. Um, the number of Nobel, Nobel laureates doesn't matter um, if they're in nuclear physics, if you never take a class from them and you're studying um, accounting, right? What does that matter? So there are just different factors that go in that you really need to look at critically. Um, there's just not a one size fits all on these things. Uh, I talked about the different kinds of institutions. So how can you compare a large research university and a small private institution? The rankings have really gotten kind of absurd. Uh, you know, people are ranking crazy. Their uh, US News and World Report is now ranking countries. Like how useful is that? My country is, I, I think we all think our country is the number one country. You know, it's just because people crave that. When you're on social media, you see, oh, ranking, where does that fit? But that doesn't really mean your destiny. What matters is the experience you're going to have at that institution. This is where some of the other factors come in that I'll speak to. So the, a great book, Where You, where you Go um, Is Not Who You Will Be by Frank Bruni. He's a, a, a columnist in the New York Times. I think lays this out really, really well. What matters is that you find a place where you're going to thrive certainly you know, do well, but where you can take advantage of the kind of opportunities that will position you for your life ahead. Your destiny is not the ranking of the institution you, you attend. You know, I put Playboy in here. I don't know if you know Playboy. It's kind of one of those old fashioned girly magazines. It's got some good articles and so on, but that was its reputation. Uh, there are even rankings for the institutions with the hottest girls and the hottest guys, the party schools, the, the, you know, the beautiful campus, all of these different things. Um, I just ask you to look at any kind of ranking with a grain of salt and recognize there are hundreds and hundreds of excellent institutions in the US. And so don't just look at the top, you know, top 10 or 20 by whatever ranking you're looking at. 
So that leads me to this concept of fit, which is so important and why U.S. higher education is still, in, it, it's so valuable because with all of these choices, with the specializations, the flexibility, you can find a path in U.S. higher education that will really set you up for your future. So I talked about the academics. Certainly you want to find a place that has the, the major, the field of study you're looking for. If you want to study, if you know you really want to go into um, architecture, uh, pick a school that's got a school of architecture. Not, not all of us do, right? So um, you've got to be careful about that. Uh, you can look at, uh, but you also might be thinking, you know, I, I think I want to study uh, biochemistry, but I'm not sure. I, I know I, I really kind of like economics as well. Well, there are places you can go that offer both of those and will give you that flexibility to change your mind or maybe do a minor in one or the other. So looking at that certainly matters. Size, what kind of, you know, how big an institution will you attend? Uh, Michigan State University is nearly 50,000 students strong. There are institutions that are fewer than a thousand students. What's the environment at that institution and how are you going to feel? Now, I would caution you that big institutions doesn't mean you're going to be a number. Um, at a place like Michigan State University, the kind of support network we put around students, the family you make, I call them family, <laughs> in your residence hall, um, the people you get to know, uh, the kind of support, you, you have lots of communities that, that you will engage in, even at a large institution. But you still might decide, I, you know, maybe I don't wanna be at a large institution, I just feel more comfortable at a school where I can walk across campus in five minutes and not 25. And what's the location? I like to remind students that there are 50 states in the United States. Uh, that means there's more than California, um, Massachusetts, and uh, uh, let's say Texas, um, that there are lots of great places to study. In fact, like Michigan State is in the Midwest where a lot of the you know, finest research institutions in the world are. Students sometimes get very caught on, on certain, you know, one location because they've heard of it before. Look deeply, understand what life is like in that place. That said, do you wanna be in a big city? New York University, you're going to be right in, you know, right in New York City, in a big city environment. A place like Michigan State, we have a campus where you were in a medium sized city in the capital of the state of Michigan, but you know when you're on campus, it's not embedded in a big city. We've got big green spaces and things of that nature. Maybe you prefer to be in a smaller town that's sort of kind of classic Americana. Maybe you've got family somewhere and you want to be close to them. All these can be really important factors. But again, that's one of the great choice things you've got in U.S. higher ed is to pick a place where you're going to thrive. That support environment I mentioned earlier, what kind of um, assistance is there? Maybe you have a special need. Maybe you have some kind of a, of a disability. Uh, maybe you need a campus because you need, uh, you're in a wheelchair and you need to get around really easily. So you don't wanna be a place that's got a lot of hills. There are lots of things to think about in that way. Finances, um, that can be a whole topic on itself. Of course, you've got to have a frank conversation with your family about what's affordable. Uh, talk to us. Research our websites, understand what the scholarships are. Uh, we've got great scholarships, but rarely, rarely, very occasionally, but very rarely will one get what we call a full ride at Michigan State University. Uh, there are other places that have that, but their acceptance rates might be very low. It, you know, you've got to make it work for your family. You want to make sure you can get through all four years. Don't say, I've got enough money for that first year and call it. You really want to look at that critically. I know how important that is. Extracurriculars. I, I can't stress enough, it's not just academics. Four years at an institution, in order to feel comfortable, in order to thrive, you need to be able to do the things you love. If doing that is, um, like my daughter uh, was a black belt in Taekwondo, she wanted to make sure there was a martial arts team where she went to school. Uh, if you love to play music, is there a place you can practice your music or sing in a choir? Look at what's there. And extracurriculars are not just, and importantly for your health, for your wellness and relaxation, but also they build your resume. What kind of um, internship opportunities, what kind of leadership opportunities can you be? Because that's what will build your resume and differentiate you. Again, with our big campuses, Michigan State has over 900 student clubs and organizations. Lots of ways to make that your own experience. It's very, very um, flexible again. 
Um, I mentioned sort of proximity of, of, of family and friends. Uh, when you're coming from overseas, if you've got an, an aunt, uh, um, aunt or an uncle that lives in Chicago area, maybe you wanna be where you can at least take the train and go visit them on the weekend. Understandable, make my, your parents feel more com are comfortable as well. Campus culture is perhaps the hardest thing to explain because it's the character of the institution. Um, we all have a personality. Uh, we're part of what we call the Big Ten group of, of institutions. So Michigan State University, University of Wisconsin, Ohio State, University of Illinois, but we're not all the same. We have a different a sort of culture and feel on our campuses. Watching videos, talking to us, if you can ever visit, get that because that again is where am I going to feel comfortable with the kind of, is it a friendly campus? Are people helpful? Do I, all of those things that come into play. Let's see, one more. Um, I talked a bit again, cost and scholarships, safety. Um, that's a big topic in the US these days and probably in particular for your parents. Um, what I what I want to say is what you see on um, on CNN on uh, U.S. media is not the everyday experience for us. Um, it's been a rough year. There has certainly been issues. Um, I tell students my I raise my children in East Lansing. I never felt they were threatened. Um, I let them do you know with normal precautions. Don't run around alone at, at night. That's a silly thing to do. Um, if you are going to be out late, be with groups. Um, don't leave your you know computer sitting there unattended. Um, so, you know, a lot of the things you read may be very isolated and get blown up in media. That said, I can never guarantee 100% safety for anybody. Um, things can happen. Uh, things can happen anyway, anywhere in today's world. But, but I wouldn't say that you should not come to the U.S. because it's unsafe. <laughs> not at all. Um, look at that, talk with your family. But, um, it, you know, sometimes I think that becomes a larger issue than it is on a real day to day. The other is feeling welcome. Um, there's been a lot of publicity about incidents in the US in recent years and so forth. Our campuses, a place like Michigan State, we've had international students coming to our campus since the 1880s. So we're talking going on 150 years. We are a welcoming place and you'll find this all over the US. Again, what you, what you see is, is not necessarily your entire, you know, the life that you'll um, encounter. And that support we have, like our Office for International Students and Scholars, always there to help you. Visa issues have been a consideration of, um, you know, why is it still a good option? It has been challenging um, for some students have been worried about visas, the ability to work when they come, when they finish. Things are changing. Just last night I read that um, there's legislation, so um, they're looking at possibly changing regulations in the U.S. Um, to make it more easy for students to work. I mean, you can work, first you can work after you graduate, that's still in place, but to actually eventually pass to citizenship. Um, there's a momentum from a lot of big tech companies and others to push more in that direction. So it is possible and students do have the ability to work after they complete. So again, I'm almost out of time here, but I wanna conclude by just saying the US offers a lot for you. You can really make it your experience by its flexibility, um, the ability to interact with people different than you are, the ability to have double majors. You've got um, to interact with a lot of people that are different than you are because we're so diverse. Hundreds of great choices. Don't stick with just what is cool and, and what's, um, you know, what the rankings are. Look carefully at what the fit is for you. What's a great place where you can thrive, where you can blossom? No, and you may also go on to um, graduate school at some point in the US or elsewhere. Know that there are scholarships available. You have to research that, but don't assume that what you see is the full cost. Um, talk with us. And above all, be organized in your search, work with your, college, with your high school counselors, start early and talk to us. This is my job, my team's job. We're there to assist. So I'm gonna conclude with that. Um, I'm, I've uh, kind of run right to the end of time, but um, if there are any questions, I'm happy to stay on for a while uh, to answer questions um, and, uh, or you can send things in the chat if you want. Um, but thank you so much. Um, I look forward to meeting with you hopefully soon, either virtually or in person. Thank you.